Hello, I'm Ara Hadadian, and thank you for visiting my website to get additional information on how to prepare for your upcoming tax appointment. In order to make the best use of our time, I ask all my clients to complete this tax organizer as best they can prior to our meeting. When you've scheduled and confirmed your appointment, you should have received a confirmation email which included a link to the full tax organizer. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to complete the organizer, which is also called the Tax Deduction Locator and IRS Trouble Minimizer. So let's get started. In your confirmation email, you'll notice that you'll have a link to the full organizer. You'll want to click on that link and follow to our information center on our website to where the organizers are listed and you'll want to click on the full organizer to get started. So once we click on the full organizer, we're going to get our PDF document that opens up. It's our tax deduction locator and IRS trouble minimizer. It's really important that you go through and read this section because it'll help you save time down the line and it may answer a lot of your questions. These symbols are really important, so make sure you read the information provided to get an understanding of what those symbols mean throughout the organizer. As we begin the organizer, we start with the basic information. Basic information could also be provided to us by copies of your prior year tax returns. So you can either fill out that information or give us copies of your return in lieu of filling that section out. In the basic information section, there are areas for estimated taxes, status changes, contributions to retirement plans, and other income and adjustments. Please make sure you go through and see if any of these apply or if you have any of the tax source documents, 1099s, 1099R, 1099B, 1099INT, as we'll see later on, that you provide us with all the copies of the 1099s that you received during the year. If you want a refund or a direct deposit, you'll want to give us your banking information here with respect to any refunds which you may be receiving or deposits that you want to make directly. All these questions here should be answered, particularly questions about the foreign income. Additional information section includes an area for dependents, interest income, and dividend income. Please go through and provide additional information that is requested here with respect to any new dependents that you have that may not have been listed on your prior year return. Any interest income or dividend income that you received, you should have received the 1099, which you'll want to supply us with. Investment sales, if you got a broker account statement and you had sales of stocks or securities during the year, you will have received a 1099B. We'll need to get a copy of that to make sure that we have your investment sales recorded properly. Child and dependent care expenses, if you have any, if it applies to you, you'll want to fill out this section here. If you itemize your deductions, then you'll want to go through these next two pages, section B. Medical expenses, there have been changes this year, so it's 10% instead of 7.5%. So most of the time people have medical expenses, but if it doesn't exceed more than 10% of your adjusted gross income, and if you're not itemizing, it may not apply. So you may want to consider whether you want to dig up all those receipts or not. So we have investment interest expenses, any brokerage or margin accounts, and taxes paid. Real estate property taxes, vehicle taxes, personal property taxes, all get reported in this section. Any state taxes that you pay during the year will also need to be reported in this section so you get proper credit for those amounts paid. If you own a home, you will have mortgage interest deductions and you'll want to provide us with the forms 1098s. If you did not receive a form 1098, then please provide us with the information of who you paid the interest to by filling out and completing this section here. Continuing with itemized deductions, if you had any cash charitable contributions, you'll want to list those in section B5. Non-cash contributions, you'll want to list those in section B6. Please pay attention to what the requirements are and if the amounts exceed these thresholds, you'll want to itemize and provide detailed descriptions and the condition of the items donated. If you have other expenses, you'll want other deductions that qualify for these types of expenses that are more than 2% of your adjusted gross income, you'll want to review section B7. If you had any casualty losses in the year, please review B8. 
section B9 is for employees who have employment related expenses that exceeds 2% of their adjusted gross income. Please review the requirements here and list out and provide totals of the amounts in this section. Section B10 is for investment expenses. Section B11 is for items costing $500 or more, any tools or equipment that you purchase related to your employment. This section here, employee business expenses, includes expenses for such things as auto, travel, home office, and education expenses. If you're a business owner or you're self-employed, you'll want to review this section and provide us with the year, make, and model of your vehicle and answer these questions here with respect to if you have any other vehicles for personal use. But the most important, you want to make sure that you give us the total miles driven during the year and the self-employed business miles driven during the year. You'll want to include all of your vehicle operating expenses in this section and provide the actual expenses. If you traveled away from home and you have traveling expenses, please use section C2. Home office expenses are listed in section C3. Please read this little business expense description as it talks about what qualifies for home office expenses to make sure that you qualify. In completing this section, please provide the square footage of your entire home or apartment and the area in your home or apartment that you're exclusively using for business purposes. You'll want to provide us with your rent and utilities and the amounts and use the annual amounts instead of the monthly amounts so that we can calculate your expense for the year. If you have any education expense, please use section C4 and also provide us with the forms 1098Ts. If you have any rental properties, you'll want to use this section, section C5, to report your income and expenses related to your rental properties. And if you are self-employed, you'll want to use section C7 to report your income and expenses from your self-employment activities. If you have any business assets that you purchased during the year that you use in your self-employed business or in your rental business activity, you'll want to make sure to report that information in section C6. These expenses listed here are the most common types of expenses for a self-employed individual. You may have other expenses, so please feel free to use this other section to list out what other expenses that you may have. Please provide us the totals for the years. We don't need individual receipts, but however, we need you to go through and add up your receipts during the year and provide us with the totals. You need to make sure that you've got your receipts and documentation to support the expenses that you're claiming on this organizer. If you relocated or if you have any debt relief or if you made some home improvements that qualify for green energy credits, you will want to use this section. Home sale provide us with the escrow closing statements for both the purchase and the sale of the property so we can correctly credit you the selling expenses that are normally disclosed on the escrow statements. Home energy credits and moving expenses. To qualify for the moving expense deduction, the distance to the new job from your old home must be at least 50 miles. So if that applies to you in your situation of having moved during the year, please fill out section D3. Getting down here to section D4, if you had any debt relief or you had a foreclosure during the year, you'll want to review this section and provide us with the respective form 1099C or 1099A, which you may have received from the lending institution. If you have any other questions that are not addressed here on this organizer, please list them out here and we will discuss them during our appointment. And finally, section D6 is the signature section. All organizers must be signed by both taxpayers if applicable. Otherwise, just sign the organizer and date it and make sure your spouse signs it if we're filing a married filing joint return. And I look forward to seeing you at your apartment time.